Good morning, how are you all? Uh, my name is Garth Dunlop. For both Niall's many sins and my many sins, we're business partners. Um, if I'm a little bit overly emotional, I've just heard, um, for those of you who are in, Bill McCallion, um, talk a little bit about his work um, as a pediatric surgeon. So I'm feeling a bit, feeling a bit um, emotional and I'm feeling a little bit unworthy, actually, in terms of the magnitude of my topic versus his. But I'll try and, I'll try and do it justice. Um, Here's the topic, okay? The topic is this, four websites and a funeral. As the web approaches its uh, 20th anniversary, many of us have been through four iterations of corporate websites and at least one, probably many near-death experiences trying to get there. My question is, 20 years into this discipline, why are websites still so consistently poor? And why is there still such a disconnect between the work that marketers put into websites and the experience that customers then go on to have on those very same websites. I can't help but observe that marketing teams don't set out to annoy their customers. They don't set out to have people screaming in frustration at the, web, at the website, at the screen, at the laptop. So if we don't set out to do that, why so often is that the end result? What gets in the way? between the best intentions of a marketing team and the ultimate experience of a customer when it comes to using what the marketing team have put together. Um, I have 10 dead simple points. I have 30 minutes. That's three minutes a point. I'm just going to keep going until someone comes and tells me to stop or I get to the end, okay? So here's the question. So I've got 10 common misconceptions, preconceptions that I don't think are correct that get in the way of building good websites. Here's the first one, and this underpins everything that I'd like to say. Websites, from the organization's perspective, are like family trees, but from the customer's perspective, they are like journeys. When you and your organization sit down to build a website, very often something like this comes out. You put a structure together that says, here's all the information that we have to share. Here's how we might wish to order that information according to what we understand. Therefore, we're going to build a website according to this structure. What happens when the customer comes along? The customer feels, nah, grand. <laughs> what the customer wants to see is not a website that looks like that. They want to see a website that looks like this because their perception of websites are as a journey. A page to a page to a page to a page. They do not care about the wider structure. All they care about is their desire to get to the next page, to the next page, ultimately to the conclusion. If you do that for your customers, they will get to the end and they will be happy. But if we don't think like that, and we get ourselves locked into the family tree style way of designing websites, this is what happens. The customer starts their journey and ends up in failure and goes back to the start and comes down and starts again, ends in failure, comes back to the start, and eventually, to get to here. How is the customer feeling with the time to get to here? Well, I would suggest they're pretty unhappy here. They're very unhappy here, and with the time to get to here, they're ready to kill dead things. And if there's one thing that marketers are too lazy about, it is the amount of work and effort they put in to turning their family tree into a customer journey, into a customer plan. And if we got that bit right, it would change everything else. Because if we focus on the stuff that matters to the customer, when they get there, then all the other decisions fall into place. Our priorities become realigned with what the customer wants. Number two is this, words, not images. This is pretty counterintuitive. As marketers for years, we have known that imagery and color drives emotion, drives action, drives brand awareness. All those things that as marketers we feel strongly about. On the web, it is words that connect with your customer even more than images. You know how these things work. It's the design part of the web process. And senior management are involved because it's absolutely essential that we get the RGB references right, the CMYK references. This brand has to be completely consistent and tied up. The CEO flies in, the marketing director gets the lattes ordered in, and these real high part meetings happen. Now, at Ilon, um, we always try to make sure that things are done scientifically, so we did a little bit of research here. And uh, we did some research to work out the quality of the decisions made versus the number of senior managers in the room. And um, what you can see here is that the, um, is that the results were pretty uh, self-expanding. 
But basically, the more senior managers you involve, uh, the worse the decision becomes. The other thing, of course, then, is what happens when the senior managers all get involved. It invariably gets left to the CEO, who takes things away and says, you know what, I'm going to speak to some design experts that I know, just to make sure that what we're doing in the design side is entirely accurate and absolutely correct. And the CEO goes and consults these design experts. And again, we did a little bit of research to see who actually gets consulted, and uh, what we have found out is that it's not just as scientific as we might have hoped. But during the design phase of the project, senior management are involved, everybody's very emotional, it's high adrenaline, it's high octane, and the designs get signed off, and then what happens? We move on to the content phase of the project. The content being the bit that matters most to the customer. Where are senior management? Senior management are nowhere to be seen. Senior management are elsewhere. And for me, here's the, the disconnect. If, you, if you'll indulge me one final set of false graphs, Here's how time is invested during a web project. We're absolutely obsessed with the design piece. Here is what matters to our customers. Our customers are absolutely obsessed with the content piece. We must, as marketers, work harder at joining the gap between how we spend our time on web projects and what actually matters to customers on web projects. Who gets the job of writing the content? Who gets the job of closing the sale? It's the pimply guy from The Simpsons, or whoever his equivalent is in your organization. The junior person, the person with time on their hands, the person whose um, time and attention we can spare to invest and put the content together. It should be the CEO and the marketing director writing the content, not the junior person. One of the other counterintuitive conclusions, if we buy into this idea that a website is a journey and not a family tree, if we buy into that theory, one of the other counterintuitive conclusions that we have to come to is that our navigation should be mimicked, not different. In other words, our headlong rush to distinguish ourselves by design is actually a misnomer. Our customers expect us to mimic and copy best practice design and to differentiate by content, by words, by imagery, by photography. So the navigation piece remains consistent because it's not cool to break that because it makes the customer journey harder. We make ourselves better, more relevant, we close more sales when we work harder on differentiating by content and limiting by navigation. If you have a look at eight broadsheet newspapers, you can see here that their look, their feel, their logos, their imagery are almost entirely consistent. But you would never mistake the Scotsman for the Indo, you would never mistake the Irish Times for the Guardian. Because they have mimicked by design, but they differentiate by content. They have learned that a design best practice has emerged for the newspaper industry, by which people who read newspapers wish to absorb or engage with this content. It's exactly the same in the web. Obviously I'm in a, a headlong rush for this 30 minutes, so I don't have time to stop and pause. But you can see that design patterns are emerging in the online world which says our customers expect to see logos in top left, global navigation horizontally along the top, search box in the top right, here or right in the middle of the screen, sub navigation by the left hand side, etc, etc, etc. Very clear design patterns are emerging by which we can help our customers turn our websites from difficult to navigate family trees to easy to navigate customer journeys. Number four, rule not exception. Far too many well-meaning, well-directed websites and web projects run aground because a very clear focus about what the website was about in the early part of the project gets replaced and gets diluted as more and more people get involved in the project and things which sound like a good idea somehow make the cut. We've got to get more ruthless around building our websites for our most common customers our most important customers, and more specifically, the most common tasks that our most, common, uh, that our most important customers happen to have. You see, what happens every time we make an extension or an addition to our websites? We clutter, we add complexity to what's already there. And at some stage, in that tipping point of complexity versus functionality, we make things too difficult for customers who are important to us, for whom we wish to make life easy. Imagine you were in charge of an airport, 
And he knew that 90% of the people who walked onto this sign wanted to do one of those four things. Would it be a good management decision or a bad management decision if we added complexity to that sign to accommodate the 2.5% of people who wanted to smoke or go to the business line? If another 2.5% of people wanted to go to security or food court or another 2.5% showers in immigration, another 25 here, would it be good or bad to turn the sign from how it looked at the start into how it looked here? We would never dream of building an airport sign like this because we know that we would just completely frustrate the majority in order to appease the minority. Why then do far too many of our websites look at this? I'll tell you why. Because we haven't spent enough time talking to customers, listening to customers, working out what matters to customers, so we just lash it all up there and let them sort it out for themselves and hope that they'll work hard enough to turn the family tree into a customer journey. The harder we work to distill what matters most to our most important customers, the more effective our websites will be. Related to that, then we have number five. Simplicity, not complexity. Again, one of the challenges that we face when it comes to building websites is that as marketers, we know too much. Our own organisations, we have been working there for a while, we know how they work, we know the content, we know the subject matter, and it's so easy to make assumptions that say our customers know the same. Do you know that less than 20% of people know what the acronym FAQ stands for? As marketers, I, I know it stands for frequently asked questions, I just assumed everybody did. But yet, less than 20% of people who aren't in marketing know what that term means. But yet we see it everywhere on websites. We've got to remove the complexity and replace it with simplicity. Perhaps this overly simple cartoon will illustrate what it feels to be in the customer's shoes versus being in the organisation's shoes. If you'll indulge me here and stretch your imaginations, for the purposes of the analogy, Ginger here is one of your customers, and you are the organisation trying to market to your customer. And this is a Gary Larson cartoon, and the cartoon is like this, but of course, poor old Ginger only understands one word, um, so all Ginger can hear is the one word. But let's imagine this is you, this is your customer, and your customer comes to your website because they would like to get themselves an email address. They turn up on your home page and you say to them, about us, contact us, products and services, etc, etc. What does your customer hear? Your customer only hears the bit of that sentence that matters to them. They white noise everything else out. So they click in to contact us and you say to them, blah, 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 we were formed in the following, etc, etc, our email address is this. What does your customer hear? Your customer only hears the stuff that matters to them. So I think that has an impact on the copywriting style that we as marketers adopt. I think it has an impact on the amount of information we post on websites. I think it has an impact in terms of how hard we have to work to clear out the clutter to make way for the stuff that matters for customers.